Hi, it's Ken from Digital Matter. Uh, today I'm going to be doing a short video on our LoRaWAN device range and more specifically the roadmap in terms of where we're headed with some of our new products. Um, so yeah, well, without further ado, we'll jump right in. Um, up front, we do need to caution against some of the stuff in this video is talking about our plans and where we're headed and that is subject to change, um, particularly with component shortages and all sorts of other things going on at the moment. So yeah. Um, the, the next generation of these products um, allow us to kind of incorporate the innovation that's been taking place and the work that we've been doing across some of our other device ranges, including the cellular products. But really, one of the biggest things we're trying to do is redesign using components that we know we've got in stock either uh, or are able to get. Um, uh, the component shortage is causing havoc everywhere. I mean, we, we're seeing chips going out to 60 week plus lead times. So, uh, one of the things we've done is try to make sure we've, we're able to get the components that are actually in the new versions of the products. Um, from a feature perspective, the other major focus has been on battery life. So we're really looking to try and drive towards this deploy once concept where you can put batteries in a device and put it out in the field and uh, never have to touch it again. Clearly that depends on the settings that you're using and the use case and, and how, uh, I guess, aggressively you want to track something. Um, the innovation part of it allows us to really apply the evolutionary updates um, to the products, and we'll dive into one or two of those in more, more detail. And then, you know, at the overarching thing for us is the, the quality of our devices and the ability to outperform in terms of performance and reliability uh, for our devices in the market. So one of the um, improvements we focused on, particularly on the new um, Oyster 3 LoRaWAN device that's coming, is the, the power profile, right? So it's interesting to actually take a look and we've got battery calculators on our support side that you can go and play with. But where does the energy actually go to in my device? And if you're talking about this deploy once concept where you want to have a device out there for, say, you know, over five years even, where's the energy actually going? And uh, kind of ironically, um, a lot of it goes into the sleep current. So, you know, when the device is sitting there turned off pretty much doing, doing very little. Um, typically with our, our tracking devices, we have the micro in a very low power sleep mode and the accelerometer is, is actually armed and working because we want to be able to wake it up as soon as we detect movement. So there's some energy getting used there. You can see that little pie chart on the right hand side. Um, you know, that's a big, big chunk of the energy is actually going into the sleep current. Um, the second biggest component is the GNSS, right? So uh, this, you know, we're talking about a full GNSS on the device that's um, potentially running for 30, 40 seconds, maybe even longer to actually get a decent position. And once it's got that, to actually then transmit that on the LoRaWAN network. And the LoRaWAN TXRX is, is as, as you can see, a very small part of the energy profile. Um, so we focused on how do we get this GNSS power down and obviously the, the sleep current as well. But uh, here we're talking about the GNSS part of it. Um, for LoRaWAN, one of the, the kind of restrictions we have is that a lot of these GNSS devices have the ability to have aiding data, which allows them to get a position fix much quicker. With the limited downlink capabilities on LoRaWAN, we, we don't have these files, which are typically 50 kilobytes big and need to be updated kind of once a week. So um, what we've done on the new Oyster 3 is we've moved to using uh, new GNSX technology that is similar to what's used on a lot of the fitness watches that you'll see out there. And as a result, the GNSS is using 20% of the power on the Oyster version 1. So that's one-fifth of the amount of energy to do the same thing, which is quite remarkable. Um, one of the other improvements, which isn't on the electronic side, but is actually on the housing side, is that we've moved to using this uh, PA6 nylon glass material across all of our housings. It's far more rugged, robust, and withstands um, greater temperature profiles. Uh, than previously used materials. The other thing that you'll notice on the new things, and here's a, the photo just kind of gives you an idea of the different colors that we're using there, but the, the more important thing is the over-molded seal. So that, that is actually in the tool itself. The seal material gets injected into the, the seal uh, little channel, and it gets bonded with the actual housing. So there's an improved fit. Um, the seal fills the entire channel, and it's actually bonded to the, the housing. So what you'll typically see is that when you're opening the unit for some reason, you know, you're know much less likely to have the seal pop out of that channel or move, and it just improves the reliability of the, of the seal itself. And then we've also moved across all of our devices to using stainless steel screws. Um, the previous galvanized uh, screws 
are, are really good, but there's some environments, you know, particularly under salty conditions, where they weren't ideal. Um, one of the other improvements that we've done, and we've spoken about this quite a bit, so I'm going to, I'm going to summarize it here, but there's material, including videos, talking about the new um, scanning technology on our edge technology. But the, the Semtech LR1110 chipset has been used on our Yabby Edge device. Uh, instead of doing a full GNSS uh, solution on the device, it actually does a scan. So it literally is only using energy for a couple of seconds to look for GNSS signals. And if it can't get those, it'll, it'll look for Wi-Fi signals and take that information and sends it up to the cloud. So D Digital Matters developed uh, an extension of our device management server called Location Engine. And that takes that information and does the necessary backend lookups, manages a whole lot of complex um, interaction with the device to actually give you this the super low power ability to get location. Um, uh, the sensitivity of the GNSS scan is, is lower than a full um, GNSS solution on the device, but the, the energy saving is quite remarkable. So depending on the use case, I really urge you to, to get some of these and try them out, right? Um, the results have been, been pretty promising in terms of what we've seen. Um, and again, it, as I say, it depends on your use cases, what you're trying to track. The, um, it kind of leads me into you know, the, the roadmap in terms of where we're at, right? So fairly recently, we, we launched the Yabby Edge LoRaWAN. So that's the, the kind of next generation Yabby using that LR1110 chipset on there to do low power GNSS scanning and Wi-Fi scanning. So the advantage is you're getting both indoor and outdoor location um, over LoRaWAN. It lowers the bomb costs by allowing us to use the uh, LI-1110 as the LoRaWAN transceiver as well. And this replaces our old Yabby LoRaWAN device. Um, the Guppy LoRaWAN, see has marked as end of life. The, the Yabby Edge is kind of at a similar price point. It's got the accelerometer in there, and it does pretty much everything that the Guppy LoRaWAN did, plus a whole bunch more. Uh, in terms of the Oyster, and this is the one I'm, I'm particularly excited about, is we're migrating from the, the previous Oyster, or V1 if you like, to Oyster 3 LoRaWAN. Um, they're currently going to prototype at the moment at production, and our ETA is for to have um, the first batch from production, mass production in May. Uh, it's in red because given supply chain issues, this, this may change, but uh, we're pretty confident we'll have these in May. Um, the Oyster is one of our flagship devices across um, the technologies or communication technologies. And the Oyster 3 LoRaWAN, I don't expect to be any different. Um, it's an ultra rugged battery powered device that's going to allow us to do really accurate GPS tracking on LoRaWAN networks and up to a 10 year battery life. And um, typically what we're seeing in our, our profiles is that we're getting two to four times the battery life of the, the V1 Oyster LoRaWAN. And again, that depends on your usage profile. I mean, example in a in a very kind of power heavy scenario is SF12 and EU, 12 positions a day. We're seeing uh, battery life go from typically 2.7 years to over five and a half years, approaching six years. So um, really, just driving the boundary, and that's um, you know, two to four times battery life. We're getting even better GNSS performance. So the new GNSS chipset in there is also being able to concurrently track uh, GPS, GLONASS, and Galileo now. So more satellites, better performance, better accuracy. Um, the latest LoRa RF, RF chipset in there has got slight power improvements. Um, the other thing we've added is support for lithium thionyl chloride batteries. So uh, much wider input voltage range on the Oyster 3 LoRaWAN. It's specifically when would you use these? It's really if you're going to be operating in very cold or very hot uh, conditions. And the, the power density of those batteries is typically a bit more than um, the typical lithium iron sulfide batteries as well. But, um, yeah, you can still use normal uh, we like to promote energizer lithiums because they're really good. So you've got a choice of batteries. Um, and then the other thing we've done on this design is combine uh, the antenna in terms of making it a dual band antenna that will cater for frequencies across the 868 megahertz range and the 902 to 928 megahertz band in um, a single stock unit. So that really simplifies things from our side in terms of production, but also from your side as a you know, stock and potentially for global deployments, it's one SKU that can go anywhere. Um, the other device in our range that's doing well is the G62 LoRaWAN device. So this is building on uh, the G62 cellular, uh, obviously the LoRaWAN version for it. And it's great for anywhere where you've got power, right? So that's from vehicles through to um, equipment. 
that may have a power source that you want to track and monitor. Uh, the G70 is in design, um, so that's the next generation of the G62. Um, you'll probably see at the top right here, I move my little face out the way, but the G62 LoRaWAN stock is now available. So uh, I can't say we can say that about a lot of our devices at this point in time. So yes, we do have G62s in stock, so if you, if you want to try some out or need some, please order before they, before they go. And the G70 is offering the same great performance and rugged design of the G62. Uh, improved RF performance in terms of the antennas and the matching and the design that we're putting in there, including the new um, uh, LoRa RF transceiver in there. Uh, we've added the analog input on the, the, the harness, so we're catering for that. Um, that's handy if you want to do things like measure uh, external battery voltage or a, a float switch that might be giving you, you know, tied to some kind of variable resistor. Um, uh, there's a number of different options as to why you might want to read an external analog input. Um, the nice thing about this device is giving you second-by-second -second analysis. Because we are on LoRaWAN and you may have unreliable uplink capability, we actually do on-device run hour and odometer calculations. Um, it's also got an internal backup battery in case of any power loss or tampering, so you can send out um, alerts immediately if, if somebody's messing with the device. Uh, so a great product for equipment and, as I say, vehicle tracking and very rugged and IP rated. Um, so I'll, I'll briefly talk about the Hawk. I did do a recent video diving into a bit more detail around the Hawk as one of our sensor monitoring devices or data loggers, if you like. Um, so the current plan um, is we've got the cellular version of it in uh, prototyping at the moment, so that design is done and we, we're busy uh, working towards mass production. And then we're busy uh, having internal planning discussions around the LoRaWAN version of it. The idea behind the Hawk is that it's a, a baseboard that deals with all the kind of base services for what you'd need in a data logger that can communicate. So in the LoRaWAN version, obviously, it'll be the LoRaWAN communications, but also power supply, battery backup, charging, all of those things on the baseboard. And then we have this option for a, a plug-in card that defines nine of the I.O. lines. The, the benefit of that is, depending on the use case and what we're trying to do, we can easily adapt the I.O. interface to cater for different scenarios. And the card itself has got intelligence on it, so you could, um, if you really wanted to, you can write your own firmware to go on there to do filtering and almost process control on the card in terms of turning things on and off. So um, I, if you're interested, take a look at the, the Hawk video that I did recently. Um, more info on the LoRaWAN version to follow. As I say, this is currently in planning. Um, and we're also talking about having an IoT satellite version of this as well, right? So for really remote areas where you want to just send data directly up to satellite, um, there would be a, a version of it to cater for that as well. Um, Shay's put together this really good summary in terms of what I've been talking about. I'll leave that on the screen for you quickly in terms of giving you an idea of the Yabby Edge compared to the Oyster 3 and compared to the G70. Um, so really catering for indoor outdoor tracking in the smallest possible footprint, uh, long battery life using the, the Edge technology. Oyster 3 is kind of our more traditional, if you like, full GNSS solution that you're going to want to stick on equipment, pallets, you name it, and it's giving you a decent, uh, when I say very accurate GNSS location, but also with two to four times the battery life of what we were getting on the previous version. G70, great for uh, rugged uh, requirements with equipment or vehicles uh, where you've got a power source. And the Hawk uh, is our offering coming, planning for um, sensor monitoring. The other thing I wanted to mention was custom design. Right? What we've found is that a lot of people buy our devices to, to try them out, particularly around the sensor side of things. Um, but for large-scale IoT deployments, typically we see that the, the customers need an application-specific device to really to get to the right price point and the firmware and software um, side of it. Right. So the, the firmware in particular on LoRaWAN is a bit of a challenge. It's not very easy to get to a point where you can update any firmware over the air. I know the spec uh, is kind of moving towards catering for it, but in reality with a battery-powered device, it's extremely complex and power-hungry to get right. So you really want to focus on your, your application-specific solution, make sure the device is designed to get to the lowest price point and the firmware is written to give you exactly what you need before you go in any kind of mass deployment of the device. So one of our models is to engage with clients to design and manufacture these custom devices. Obviously, the commercials need to make sense, but feel free to reach out to your local 
uh, DM sales guys to have a chat about what it is you want to do, right? Um, clearly, the cost of a custom design for you know, 10 or 50 or 100 units isn't really going to uh, be worthwhile. But um, if you are talking about larger scale rollouts, then definitely let's have a chat about it. So some recent examples without going into too much detail is um, a GPS tracking device with stop go indicators used to indicate to tracks whether they can or can't uh, enter certain restricted areas. Um, utility power line monitoring, um, tracking of specific cable drums where the housing uh, was a custom design that needed to be, be padded for specific requirements. As I say, have a chat to us about anything that you might have a specific requirement for. So in quick conclusion, uh, where we've got to is a great evolution, we believe, of our LoRaWAN devices. So longer battery life, greater performance. Uh, the Abbey Edge and Oyster 3 really hit the sweet spot in terms of battery power tracking for long battery life. And then the G62 slash G70 coming are great for vehicles and equipment. And the Hawk is really planned to be this versatile device that will allow you to interface to a bunch of different sensors and um, be really flexible about what type of uh, information you want to get out of them and what, um, what sensors it integrates with. Um, from our side, uh, these gray hairs aren't going... I'm just getting more and more of them. Right? The supply chain challenges continue. Uh, we've got components on allocation despite our planning. We've ordered stuff, as an example, the other day. You know, orders we've had in the system for over nine months, we, we get told with weeks to go to delivery that they get pushed out by three months. And this is the it's like building a house on quicksand at the moment. So um, without bemoaning this too much, uh, what I really urge you to do is speak to our sales guys about what your needs are for at least the next year. And uh, if you can, get orders in to secure uh, the stock that we do have coming. It does also help us planning in terms of ordering product. Um, we're already ordering components for 2023 delivery. Uh, sounds crazy, I know, but we've got to do it, right? So um, I urge you to work with us in terms of planning for that. And if you do have a large project, the earlier that we engage to actually start securing components and stock for it, the better. Um, from my side, thanks very much for listening. Hopefully that's been informative. Um, you know, we're committed to where we're going with the LoRaWAN devices, and we see a lot of traction with it, in, particularly in Europe, which is great. Um, more info on our website and more info to come. Thanks very much.